Hey there, Internet. Michael Besog here. Last video, I encouraged you to start using a phrase, the phrase proper role of government in your everyday conversations. And in this video, we're going to go a little deeper into what that proper role is. What is the role of the federal government and how does that differ from the role of city, county, and state governments? Now, I can warn you right now that watching the rest of this video is not going to win you any arguments, but it'll probably fast forward you to that inevitable point in your arguments where somebody calls you a racist, sexist, bigot, homophobe, and you know what that means. So, let's begin. So I got into another argument on Twitter the other day, and uh, it's basically the same subject as last time. I said that Meals on Wheels is wealth redistribution, and therefore has no place in the federal government. Now, we can talk about how people think that it's somehow virtuous to have the government do your charitable works for you, but that's not the purpose of this discussion. That's not the point that I was making. And it's not the point that he replied to, so don't think that either. He replied to my wealth redistribution jab with, So what? It's a useful program that helps a lot of needy people. And I said, that isn't the purpose of government. And since it so clearly isn't, I was, I was taken back by his response. And it, it showed me just how much of a gap I would have to bridge in order to get him to the point where he could understand the true purpose of government. His response was as follows. That's exactly the government's purpose. A government's purpose is to figure out how to use the resources of a nation. Here's where the difference between my public and personal responses kicked in. My immediate reaction was something like, First, take a big step back and literally FUCK YOUR OWN FACE! But I tweeted back the following instead. The purpose of government is the protection of private ownership of property and ideas, followed by the preservation of individual liberty. Here's why his statement is so revealing of a problem. He thinks that the government is an entity all its own with its own protection in mind, protecting itself, preserving itself, like it is its own thing in and of itself. He thinks it is the owner of the resources. He thinks the government decides what to do with everything. He thinks he lives in the USSR. He just doesn't know it. But let's get a little deeper here. If the government decides how to use the nation's resources, and in doing so, decides to take tax money and use it on programs like Meals on Wheels, then the government must see tax money as a resource. Since governments print money, it's foolish to think of it, like the currency itself, as a resource. So what resource are we talking about? We're talking about the taxpayer. He thinks the taxpayer is a resource. I mean, it's not, it's not something no one's ever thought of before. It was obvious to Lenin and Stalin, it was obvious to Kim Il-sung, it was obvious to Mao. This guy thinks that the government's purpose is to figure out how best to use the taxpayer. Thankfully, the founders didn't think like him. Thankfully, we know that our government was instituted to secure our God-given inalienable rights, deriving its just powers from our consent. I don't usually do this because in this day and age, I expect that you're already looking this stuff up as you watch. But let's look at what the internet says about what the purpose of government is. And, oh, would you look at that. Protect individual rights. And another. Oh my, those look familiar. So, there's obviously some legitimate use of taxpayer money. I'm not saying that there isn't any. I'm not an adherent to anarcho-capitalism or some other failing and stupid philosophy like that. So, let's go into a little more detail. What should the federal government run? What should it fund with tax money? I think there are really only four things. 
And the depth of those is up for discussion. But it's really, they fall into one of the four categories. It should fund and run a federal police force. And we see that in the form of the FBI. It should run and fund courts. It needs to be able to set up a judiciary. It should run and fund the military, and that includes every form of homeland security to include Border Patrol and Protection, Coast Guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, everything. And finally, it should fund infrastructure. So there's a lot of wiggle room there. And that seems to be where most of our arguments are coming from. The, the, it's where most of our arguments are most fervent. So how th should that play out? The infrastructure side, the promote the general welfare side of using taxpayer dollars. Let's say that we, through our representatives, decide that our lives would be much improved if we could move our goods and provide our services quickly across the nation. Then the federal government can lay taxes and purchase land for and contract the building of roadways, railways, etc. That's legitimate. However, without taxing or spending, laws could be written which promote the building of and the inexpensive operation of toll road building corporations, rail corporations, etc. It's not always necessary, and libertarians would argue it's almost never necessary, to tax and spend money in order to promote the general welfare. Let's run through a few more examples. Tax incentives, uh, meaning reducing one's taxable income, for donations to organizations like Meals on Wheels. That's promote the general welfare. Opening health insurance markets to allow competition across state lines would reduce the cost of health insurance for everyone and therefore promote the general welfare. Building ports and rest stops and national parks, these are all valid actions under promote the general welfare role of the government, and they would cost money. They would require taxing. That means that each of them is potentially the proper role of the government, but that doesn't mean uh, that ex the execution of each of those is not up for debate. How to do it is always up for debate, but their legitimacy is not. So does that mean that no government programs to feed the needy should exist? No. It doesn't mean that at all. It just means that there should be no federal programs that do it. The role of the states, and by extension their counties and cities, is not enumerated. It's not written out in the Constitution. So it really depends on the state. And it should. If Massachusetts decides that it is the proper role of their state government to tax their residents and provide health insurance for all of them, then it should. If California thinks that its proper role is to tax its citizens and provide welfare for illegals, then it should. And if Texas decides it's the proper role of its go state government to ensure all residents can carry and conceal, then they should. And if the residents don't like it, they, are, they ha have the ability to leave those states and still be a part of the greatest nation on the planet. Not that Texans would leave. But make no mistake, the government neither owns nor decides the best use of resources. The people that own the resources do that. And they form their governments in order to protect that concept. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please click like. If you like these videos and you want to see more of them, go ahead and click subscribe. It's a little button. Be safe, and I hope to see you soon.